G'day folks, got Amon here from Oz Venture. Thanks heaps for tuning into our channel and the support you've given us since we kicked it off just prior to Christmas uh, last year. So we've only been going for a few months really. Uh, we've had great support and I thank you very, very much for it. So if you do enjoy what we do, please hit that subscribe button and, uh, and follow us so you can be updated. A few people have asked about our travel setup. We've done a bit of video just recently on our 79 series uh, six cylinder Land Cruiser. Uh, a 2005 model and um, went into a bit of depth of what we've done with that basically more essential stuff than than bells and whistles for the hell of it um, hence that's how we travel that's how we set up to travel we've been traveling Australia with um, car top tinnies uh, and car top boats and uh, and towing boats around Australia since 1985 so we've learn a little bit along the way and um, hopefully I can help shortcut your preparation, um, maybe save you a few bucks along the way and um, make your trip that much more enjoyable. Anyway, so what we've got here is a, uh, I'll swing you around. So our current car top hull is an Integra Marine 4 metre V-nose punt. It is fibreglass foam sandwich construction. The vacuum infused resin system ensures the lightest possible outcome without compromising strength. Plus it is totally unsinkable. It has a large front casting deck that forms a huge dry storage area. High sides offer an added peace of mind in croc waters in Northern Australia. And the big rear seat slash casting platform creates an open fronted large storage area at the rear. Now four meters constitutes a large car topper, about as big as most people would attempt. So I needed to be mindful of not creating a double decker bus looking rig. I'm just no fan of um of having those setups where they're super high and if you're traveling through the bush, you're catching up on limbs and branches and all sorts of things, wiping out bits of the boat, wiping out bits of, um, of your vehicle, uh, catching up on things. Also windage when you're on the highway is a fair bit of a problem depending on how you're gonna load the boat. So I went for the easiest, uh, hopefully the strongest and simplest setup, which I think is probably the most affordable setup as well. So I'm gonna run you through that. Hopefully you get something out of it. Obviously there's some really, really good um, boat loading setups for car toppers. And uh, by all means, look at those, but they all come with a certain amount of mechanical nous and me mechanical action. So that means things can go wrong. Not much can go wrong with this. The odd thing can. Keeps it all low profile, keeps it all really simple, keeps it all really safe. So at the moment, We've got the uh, Integra on a little fold-up aluminium trailer. Uh, pulls, pulls apart very, very easily. And that's a mangrove jack one made in Western Australia, anodized aluminium. And um, what that does, and I'll just show you over here, when we're towing the caravan and going doing our major trips from point A to point B, that little fold-up trailer actually fits Pulls apart in minutes, and I mean minutes, and fits in our tunnel boot once we sort a few things out in there. If there's one thing that we learnt over all our trips around Australia, particularly with car topper boats, is if you've got to pull them off the top of the vehicle every time you want to have a fish, a quick late afternoon session, an early morning session, uh, a middle of the day session, just becomes hard and cumbersome. Uh, very, very hot, obviously, up in the tropics where we do a lot of our traveling, and you just don't feel like doing it. So when we get to many locations, if we can't have the boat right next to the caravan or right next to the vehicle where we're, um, where we're camped in the water, we then put it on this folding trailer. It's a massive asset, uh, and it just means we fish more in fishing and boating and using the boat to access more remote parts of Australia than you can with a full drive is a big part of what we do. So I'm gonna run you through our setup here. Um, bear with me and I'll start with just what I've set up on the vehicle to get this boat up and down in it. I had this canopy manufactured quite a number of years ago, Dave's Metal Products down in Sydney, um, doing an amazing job. It was to pretty specific requirements. So when Dave's Metal Products makes their canopies, they put this aluminium channel I got three aluminium channels. That center wheel is actually attached to that center channel. I got three channels, rear, center, and forward. 
knowing that I eventually need to put some sort of rack system on it. I've got the heavy duty Rhino rack system here. That's all it is, is heavy duty Rhino rack system. Um, I've put a couple of extra um, pieces on top of that just so that we get a bit easier sliding of the of, of the uh, gunnels of the boat when we put it up. A little bit of packing up here. Uh, I modified this Rhino rack. Um, I can't even remember what it was. It was an end piece or something like that and I modified it just as a guide for the boat uh, from the rear and attached it. And then of course, the 1.8 meter Rhino rack roller attaches um, as it should, just to your Rhino rack uh, up from underneath there. And um, so we've got a full 1.8 meters to load her up there. That roller, of course, sits just below. I hope you can see that there, but it sits just below the height of where your boat's gonna sit. So you, it's not taking the weight, it's just helping the first bit of getting that boat up on the, um, up on the back of the car. I've got a uh, speeded up version of loading the, the boat uh, up on the Wenlock River at Cape York, so I'll show you that. Um, on the front here, again, we just used these um, ring anchor points, basically, uh, as a guide to keep the boat um, where we need it and not sliding off when we're loading and unloading. You'll see toward the middle there, there's a couple of extra rings that we've mounted on the front. Now they are to secure the boat. I'll show you how we did that. I didn't want to run straps. Um, around to me again. The reason I don't like running st conventional tie down stra straps on boats, um, obviously on alloy, or alloy boats, they wear a lot and they can wear through on the corrugations and you can lose one of your straps and obviously lose a boat or something like that. Um, you know, I just see strapping as temporary. I don't see it as a good permanent way of mounting and a good solid way of mounting. And of course, you know, most of those things we've been through over the years ourselves and, and, and had them fail on us. Okay, so the way the system works is once you've made up uh, these various tie downs, stainless steel tie downs to the right lengths, uh, you clip onto your, your boat tie downs, which then clip back towards back and inward towards this is where our bars sit back here on the gunnel clips back there so it's pulling in and it's pulling the boat backward a bit on the back it's pulling inward and it's pulling forward so all of these tie downs are pulling into each other and they're pulling slightly down so they're securing the boat nice and firmly on top of the vehicle all right just for further explanation on these tie downs uh, that I've set up. They're pretty straightforward. They're just a section of stainless chain, which I've put heavy duty shrink wrap around just to make them um, a little bit sturdier and not flopping around all over the place when you're using them, not falling on your car's paintwork and what have you. We've used a, um, a heavy duty stainless steel clip on each end. We've then connected with good solid stainless steel D shackles. As I said, shrink wrapped our amount of chain which, which gives us the required length we need for each tie down. We've then gone to a, a stainless steel turnbuckle. Straight on the end of the turnbuckle there's a pin system that allows us to to clip off our, uh, our second stainless clip to that. This tie down system allows for absolute minimal movement of the boat hull in any direction and it eliminates the wear, vibrational wind noise and inadequacies that relate to overboat webbing style ratchet tie downs. Righto, so I'll run you through this uh, winch that I showed you before. 3,000 pound winch, doesn't really need to be anything like that capacity, but that's one of the smaller ones you can get. As I said, it was very, very cheap, just 12 volt. Um, and we've welded that, uh, that post onto the bottom of it. Come with me while they come around the front of the car. Simple as locating into, hope you can see that. That's just locating into that oversized, piece of channel that the post fits into. Once the winch is in place there, all we need to do then is open up the bonnet, clip the alligator clips to the positive and negative terminals uh, on the battery in the car, and we plug in our controller, forward back, and it's as simple as that, and we can run that winch rope straight over the top of the car there. 
and, um, and pull it up. Now I've put that locating pin that I mentioned down the bottom here just to bring the winch higher so that the winch rope isn't rubbing on the, uh, the roof of the ca cabin of the car. Um, so really simple to set up and saves all the heartache of trying to push, pull, get the boat up there. It's really, really simple. You'll see on the vid when we're doing the loading in the bush that um, Trish is just doing the operating. I'm saying, yeah, up a bit, down a bit, and I'm helping from behind. In this situation, we use the small removable boat loading winch to haul the boat up a short, steep bank and onto more level ground before reversing the ute in for boat loading. We have a boat hoist outboard trolley that saves manual cartage of the outboard and allows for very easy transport from the boat and low effort loading into vehicles or onto their purpose-built A-frame caravan mount. The hull is then lent up against the rear full length loading roller. You can of course choose to make a bridle arrangement to make that process easier, but we get by without it. As you can see, the boss is up the front on the winch controller and a bit of communication from myself gets the rig up on the roof simply and with no stress, the way it should be.